Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks and welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Well, we're making a film today on uh, a part about the medieval warfare, uh, which is often forgotten, and that's logistics and the baggage train. And my favourite uh, character in this is, is one of our greatest kings, one of the greatest English kings, that's Edward III, who came up with an idea of reducing the size of the baggage train. Now you consider a medieval baggage train, it's got to carry everything. As soon as it's in enemy territory, it's got to have everything. It's got to have every nail for every plank every plank, every beam. If they expect to make bridges, they've got to bring it with them from England. Horseshoes, horse nails, uh, arrows by the hundreds of thousands, bows, bowstrings, victuals, food that won't rot. Yeah, it's so much. And you can imagine that a baggage train containing everything, even to make the big catapults for a siege like the trebuchet and things like that, they would be incredibly long and they'd need good roads. But Edward III looked at this and he decided that uh, instead of having enormous wagons pulled by great big long teams of oxen, he will reduce the size and he will have small two-wheeled ox carts that can pull one load but go through every narrow road. So instead of the baggage train being contained or confined to one big thoroughfare. They can go by the byways, the highways, and then meet at other locations. The soldiers will march with them, yeah, and uh, protect them. But he also had this other genius, and I, I've actually got to an important piece for the baggage train here, to Bill Hook, because Edward III employed soldiers to go forward ahead of the baggage train to cut away all of the vegetation on the side of the roads. They had guys with the, lo the pikes with these on the end, yeah? And they would cut down low hanging branches so that the baggage train wasn't delayed. So they're protected by soldiers. They have uh, soldiers and foragers going forward, clearing the road. This is an absolute brilliant way of approaching moving the, the baggage trains. Now, I used to work at Blenheim Palace uh, many years ago, and I got to know about the history of the Duke of Marlborough, the Battle of Blenheim, 1704. And he was actually famous for his two-wheeled carts and for moving by the highways and the byways through the narrow paths. I wonder where he got his idea from. There's actually a picture of a medieval baggage train on the move. Uh, I don't think it's English, and the, there are lots of wagons, great big wagons, lots of horses, lots of men all moving around over the countryside. But one of the wagons, one of the main focus, is not, full of, not only full of baggage, it's actually full of ladies too. So this just goes to show just what you had to put in your wagons, yeah? So if you've got a wagon full of ladies, you've got their clothes as well, yeah, and their tent, and their, well, tentage, you know, ropes. If there's a flag, there's got to be a flagpole. That's got to be carried. If there's a flagpole, there's got to be ropes. So you have got so many different wagons full of kit. Spare wheels, the wheelwrights, yeah? The spare shoes and boots. The guy who can repair the boots and shoes. The cobbler, as we call him. Um, caltrops, look at these horrible things, you know, for spiking horses. They're terrible, terrible things that they put in front. Uh, how about this then? If you've got the king or a lord or a knight, he's going to have his own special baggage train, isn't he? He's going to have a better tent, he's going to have stuff, he's going to have a nice cot to sleep in. But how about they carry their own supply of nice fragrant moss to wipe their backsides in their own special privy? Yeah? So, these wagon trains, they were enormous, these baggage trains, as they're called. But on my model here, I've got one wagon which is full of fodder. That's all it's full of, fodder for the oxen and horses within the baggage train. Then you have wagons filled with arrows with all the different kit, yeah. So, Henry V, though, when he left uh, the siege of Harfleur, this is 1415, on his route up to what he thought was going to be safe, Calais, but in fact he was intercepted at 
Agincourt, but that's for another story, eh? He stripped the baggage train down. He had wagons, but mainly he had pack horses. So you've got pack horses that can carry an extreme amount of kit. But if you look at uh, like the, the uh, Cressy campaign, uh, Edward III, and one of the shipments, there was half a million arrows. That's absolutely incredible. And of course, if you go back to my film, The Battle of the Herrings, yeah, the food supply, the English army was fine, provided it operated within striking distance of the coast, so it could simply be resupplied from England. I hope you enjoyed our little film. If you did, like, share and subscribe. And we now have a Patreon account, so if you'd like to support our channel even further, yeah, the link is in the description. Now, before I finish, I've got to give a shout out to a couple of our new Patreon members. Yeah, so here we go. Thank you very much, Richard McPherson and Mika S. And if I get the names wrong, tell me, it's my accent. So, for now, bye. See you soon.